Where's that hecking on button? Ooh, I found it! Let's play! Good evening everybody, Loke here with the Trials of Luke and Loke and this week we have a little challenge which is the One Hit Wonder. So, in Euro Truck Simulator 2, as you may have seen for the 300th video special, I was a tad reckless. Um, I damaged myself severely in that continental trip. So I figured, let's see how far I can actually go without getting a single damage. So as you can see, my truck is not damaged at all. I completely repaired it up after that debacle that was that 300th road trip. But now I need to see how far I can get without damaging myself. So for that purpose, we're going to go and grab, you know, a little something. Ju just a little something to actually move ourselves along. I think it's some gravel. And that's what we're having to move along from Aberdeen to Manchester. I don't think I'm going to make it to Manchester without damaging myself, but we shall see. I currently have 26,523 euros, so I'm good for money. I just need to be careful. So, let's see how this goes. I just need to make sure that I'm a careful little battle. And we drive on the left, don't we? Here. Yes. Because we're in England. England. Good old land of fish and ships. Okay. Careful. There we go. Take it easy. It's only going to get more difficult once I actually have, you know, a trailer to contend with. So that's going to be somewhat problematic. I need to not get distracted, it did, uh, and I need to not die. So that is essentially the aim of this game right here. Um, I've still not, you know, upgraded my truck or anything since the last visit. Ah! Since the last visit to this game. It's essentially, I just travelled from... Uh, to my place in Aberdeen and we are just picking up straight from there because I, I like I like trucking in and around Britain um, it's t starting from Scotland it's, it's just a nice place to be to be honest I just enjoy it a lot there we go hey let's enter that uh, we will go to the freight market and we shall pick up that gravel that I talked about yes gravel right here we'll take that job and we've got Plenty of time to do that. I'm a tad sleepy again. I should have probably slept beforehand, but eh, it's all part of the fun, isn't it? It's all part of the fun. If I get sleepy, I'll just have to make sure that I take a rest without, you know, crashing, because um, that could be problematic. Problematic indeed. So careful. There we are. So we're going to move you around a tad and back it up. Back, back it up. Okay, careful. There we go. We're nice and even. Okay. We're good. I just don't want to accidentally ram it, because then, then that's basically the challenge over. And... Hey! Tea, please. Thank you. Two sugars. Yes. Awesome. So, we've got our truck. We've got uh, estimated time of arrival being 4.21. We've got that on. So, let's rock. Because, yeah, gravel. Rock. Do you get it? Do you get it? Nah, you get it. Okay, careful, careful, sweet. So yeah, if I see any one bit of damage flash up, that is essentially game over. The time having started when we clicked on that little T button. Don't crash into me. I've, oh god, no, no, please don't. Bad, good, no, stop. Oh god, this is already going horrendously. I pulled out a bit too far. Okay, this This is fine. Um, move you around. There we go. <laughs> this is fine. I didn't almost get rammed by a car. A suicidal AI just straight out of the uh, the junction. No, it's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's awesome. Okay. There we go. Once we're out of the city, I'll feel a bit more confident. Um, indeed. It's just... Yeah. I feel a lot more confident once I'm out of the city. It's, it's a lot more compact in these areas. Um, and I want to be able to free roam a bit better. Because then I'll be able to keep an eye on the roads. Whereas there's cars everywhere around here. So, yeah. I see you. And buses. Buses are a mortal enemy. Okay, I've uh, got you coming up on my right. Checking the wing mirrors. We've got the red lights coming up here. Stop! There we go. <laughs> the little tie going boing, boing, boing. Okay. Cool, and green light, green light is a go. Sweet. 
There we go. I'm gonna move around here. So yes, how's everybody's Christmas? Do you have a good Christmas? Eat plenty of noms? Good. Noms are one of the best bits about Christmas. And of course, seeing loved ones as well. Seeing loved ones is amazing. It's awesome. But yeah, food. Food. Food is good. Um, Lukey and I had some amazing noms. It was delicious. And most definitely, again, one of my favourite bits about the festive season is cooking for Lukey. So, because, you know, I'm not a terrible cook, but he seems to think that I'm, I'm not, I'm not, like, horrendous. But I'm, 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 yeah. <laughs> I love cooking, but I'm not the best. And I'm, I'm sure Lukey's just like, yeah, you're good at cooking. And then he's like, oh, no, no, ew. But no. He, he, he doesn't seem to, like, get poisoned by my food, so I'll take that as a win. Uh, oh, corners. Corners are a problem. And smooth. There we go. Yeah, Luke it hasn't been poisoned by my cooking yet, so you're gonna take the wins as they come. As for gifts, I hope you all had very nice Christmassy gifts. I had quite a few nice things indeed. I ended up getting Super Smash Brothers, despite complaining a lot about the price of it. Fifty-five pound is still a lot for a game, but I got quite quite a, a, a nice gift. In the form of that, so that that's quite nice. It's just it's it's a bloody expensive game, um, and I begrudge paying really. <laughs> but no, I I got gifted it, which is very nice indeed. So I'm looking forward to having fun with that. Brawlout is still one of my favourite fighters, though. It's it's just I love the, the characterfulness of it. It's got a lot of vibrancy. Now, yeah, Smash has some of that vibrancy as well, but I, I like I like the uniqueness of Brawlout. You, you've not seen it elsewhere, whereas there's been many iterations of Smash, so seeing a brawler do its own thing, try and be unique, uh, try and uh, come into a essentially a niche which is very competitive with Smash and Tekken and all those other sort of fighting brawling games, it's, it's, it's a refreshing thing to see. So I'm very glad that Brawl Out is a thing, and I'll most definitely be bringing more of it to the channel. I still have to work out um, how to set up capture cards and stuff. I'm looking into capture cards, so I do want to bring some Nintendo uh, Switch goodness to the channel, as well as some like PS2 and Xbox 360 and PS3 stuff um, as well. Because I, I, I want to cover more, well, captions, retro games. They're, they're not retro, but like previous gen games uh, that I wouldn't otherwise be able to bring on the channel via, you know, just PC. Um, at the moment, everything we've done is on my PC which is a, a budget computer, so I've not been able to show off like the massively intensive games or, or, or do really good emulation. I, I actually want to use the hardware that the games were designed to be on. Um, I want everything on the channel to be as visceral and raw as, as, as possible. It, it needs to be realistic, it needs to be the experience that was intended. I don't want to, you know, run an emulator and then you get glitches because of, of, of the emulator and all that jazz. So. Yeah, that, that's essentially why I'm waiting on, on getting a decent enough capture cards until, you know, I can actually show off those sorts of things. Ooh, we've got the, the red car, black car game again. Just have to make sure that I don't crash as we're going up here. No, 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 no. Okay, that's fine. Uh, but yeah, gaming, video games, as evidenced by our over 300 videos at this point. We like video games a lot on this channel. We do like video games a lot, indeed, and it's just, you know, it's, it's just something that, that we absolutely adore. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been doing this every single day and then a bit for more than 300 days. We're going to be coming up to a year on the channel when it hits April Fools, because, you know, that's the actual channel's birthday. Um, I didn't realise, but we actually started the channel on April Fools Day, which is interesting. <laughs> actually quite an interesting uh, little factoid. It's like, yeah, all right, we've actually... Uh, mistakenly done an April Fool's joke. That's what this whole channel is. It's just an April Fool's joke through and through. That got a little bit out of hand. But, you know, having fun with it. Just absolutely adoring this channel. It's it's been it's been an interesting experience. Um just being a stupid flappy bat on the internet and then uh, having Lukey the Fox so as well. It's just oh, it's so good. So good. I absolutely love sharing our, our adventures across the madcap jaunt of Europe. It's... 
I, I, I cannot wait for like the, the 500th video. That that's going to be insane when we get to that. But, and it's not too far away. I mean, at this rate, you know, we could be doing it a, a year and a half into our our, our journey. Um, even less than that, actually, because yeah, once once we get to a year, you know, we we could perhaps be at 500 videos, which is insane, absolutely insane to to be doing this sort of thing on such a regular basis. But you know, it's still, we love what we do, and you know, yeah, there's other channels that might be bigger and and produce fewer videos, but you know. We love what we do, we just want to share stuff that we enjoy, and even if not many people watch it, I, I've, I've said before on the channel, if nobody watched it, watched our content, we, we'd still produce videos. We love what we do, so people not watching it is not going to stop us. We've got many videos w which have zero views on, but I absolutely adore, just because it's me being Squeaky Baddo, just enjoying and loving games. and. That's what this channel is, is all about, just enjoying and loving games for the experience that they are. I mean, I just I just want to get that love across. I, I love gaming, I love games journalism, I eat, drink and sleep that stuff. It's, it's what I adore and I've, I've gotten into it even more in this past year. I took it a bit more casually in my past but I, I, I just st since starting YouTube I've realised how much I hecking love this stuff and it's, it's, just, it's just rekindled the absolute passion for gaming that, that was lost uh, somewhat during my first couple of years at university because you know I I would do the the standard thing of staying up all night and playing video games that that's how I first played a lot of the uh, Fallout New Vegas DLC I stayed up um, overnight during my second year at university just playing that and and then it was the same for Skyrim just playing the DLC overnight but it was more of just like a choice like oh yeah I'm experiencing this I'm not really thinking too much about the experience and it was a lot about being inside my own head just about being inside my own head while playing these games and not actually thinking about the experience whereas now having started doing YouTube videos because I'm having to be more vocal with my opinions, with my observations, I've realised that there's so much more in games and gaming. And that has led me to do more reading around games and gaming, around the lore, around the construction of video games. And it's essentially got, got me to process the experience. For, for example, I probably wouldn't have gone into as much depth about how much I love Euro Truck Simulator if I hadn't done that 300th video because I just didn't spend enough time in this game actually looking around the environment because I kept having the radio on whereas now as, as you can probably hear we don't have any music because again YouTube is a bit funny about uh, having copyright music which, which is yeah it's it's a bit of a pain but y you can get struck quite nastily but the point is that when I don't have the music it makes you more aware of your surroundings, more aware of of what the graphical limitations of this game is, but that makes me appreciate the game more, because yes, it has its limitations. Every single game that has ever been produced has its limitations, but that's what makes them enjoyable. Let's take uh, Harry Potter and the uh, uh, Philosopher's Stone, for example, the PS1 game. That thing will cut your eyes, there are so many polygons in that game, it hecking hurts. but. It's an amazing game nonetheless. It's an amazing game because of the story it tells. I love the game for the experience it is, despite its flaws, despite its limitations, because it was limited by the engine at the time. A lot of the, 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 the 3D games of that generation, of the PS1 generation, look like, look like they were thrown into a blender. They are horrendous in their graphics. But where they have graphical limitations, they make up for in story and charm. Something I have realised in uh, AAA and AA gaming from the PS2 sort of like, I don't want to say genre, but era, there you go, the PS2 era, I'm losing words, um, compared to the, the modern era of gaming, with the exception of indie gaming, is that they are embracing their limitations. Um, whereas, oh god, I've got to merge. Whereas 
in modern gaming, they they don't embrace the limitations as much. Um, they just put out a game and then they patch it. They keep on patching it. But with indie games, they embrace the limitations of not having, you know, millions of pounds in funding, of not having specialised people who they're just for sound design, they're just for graphical design, they're just for level design. No, sometimes with these indie developed games, it's just one person doing what they love and they might not know as much about like the the graphical design. They might not know as much about sound design. For example, um, Obra Dinn, massive, massive graphical limitations, but it makes up for it in the story that it tells. It makes up for it in the, the unique gameplay that it has. It's an amazing experience despite or, or even enhanced due to the graphics. It, it's a Return of the Overdeen, if you haven't seen it, it's a beautiful graphic. It's it's stunning. It, it's just two, two pixel colours. Two pixel colours blended and shaded in such a way that you're able to make distinct features and you have to have those distinct features to play the game because it's an explorative puzzly detective detective game so you'd think limited graphics would be a massive drawback for that sort of game but no it's an absolutely stunning game and an absolutely stunning experience absolutely wonderful and again it embraces the li those limitations as an and as a consequence it's substantially better than it might have otherwise been if it had you know cutting edge graphics if it was made with the best graphics in the world you know 4k and all that stuff it would be a brilliant game but it wouldn't have that charm that it currently has it it harkens back to the retro era of gaming that's what return of the Overdin does and I know I'm rambling a lot about it, but it's amazing. It's an amazing game. Um, just from what I've seen, just from, from the small amount that I've seen. I've not played it. Um, just because, you know, limited time, full-time work, student, all that jazz. So I, I have to pick and choose what I can do. But from what I've seen from Let's Plays and, and just having experienced small bits and pieces, it's... It's stunning. It, it, it is a stunning revolution in what you can do when you embrace your limitations. And seeing small things like that is, is great. For example, I've played uh, Papers, Plays, the, the the game that was produced by the same person that produced a Return of the Obra Dinn many years later. And that is a game that I have played and showed off on the channel. Again, you could have had the best graphics in the world, indicate, the best graphics in the world. And, you know, it could have been 4K again. But... Then again, Papers, Please, if it didn't have that stark, dark grey sort of like colour scheme with, with, with the bold red of the Aristotelian eagle, I think it, it wouldn't have been as striking as it would have otherwise been if, if you know you, you had cutting edge graphics, 4K graphics. So again, a game embracing its limitations and being massively improved due to that, that just embracement I don't think that's a word heck it I've made up a word that embracement of those limitations that's what makes it great and yes you might be thinking you've not played Return of the Obra Dinn you can't comment on it well fair enough but there you go I've given another example papers please made by the same developer again embraced limitations brilliant game I don't know where I started with this um PS2 games yes <laughs> PS2 games and uh, previous generation of games and gaming embracing their limitations. That's where I was, wasn't it? Due to, um, yes, the capture card. That's what I was talking about, the capture card. Yeah, I've been looking around at different capture cards. And the Elgato HD seems to be the one that I'm, I'm making my mind up, uh, up on. But if you've got any experience in capture cards, you know, put put like a, a, a suggestion in the comments or, or such. Um, I want to get as many different opinions as I can about the topic. There's only so much that internet research will do. First-hand, like, reviews of this would be massively, massively important and, and really useful as well. Because, again, it's the first time I'm going to have done capture card stuff. 
we are a very novice channel. Mm. Ah, I'm getting sleepy. Very novice channel in the sense that we haven't really done any of this stuff before. Everything you've seen is generally us learning or having done done stuff for the first time. Luke and I don't really know what we're doing when it comes to YouTube and 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 stuff. We we've only learned as much as, as we have done so in these past 300-ish videos. Um, I had no experience at all editing, rendering, uploading videos and you know making thumbnails and doing descriptions and all that jazz I had no experience before starting any of this we have only learnt and you know just seen what others have done and try to you know emulate where we see fit stuff that we love and you know pay homage to things that we love and as a consequence those things have influenced what we do on the channel and influenced how we do things because it's about le it's a learning experience. That's what I find YouTube to be. It's a learning experience about what we are doing. Oh, that's a learning storm. Good. I'm like, no, no, don't do that. Don't die. Did I die? No. Um. Yeah. It's a learning experience. Everything we have done on YouTube has been a learning experience, and we're only going to be learning. There's always going to be something new to learn. That, that that's always going to be the fact. You can read all the books in the world. You can watch all the YouTube videos in the world. But there's always going to be something to learn. And I'm gonna have to find somewhere to sleep in a minute. That's fine. There's someone somewhere on the left to find to sleep. Sweet. Four hours. So I, I'm getting distracted here again. Again. Uh, next rest stop in an hour. Yeah, I'm gonna have to rest because I've got four hours. But yeah, there's always something new to learn. That's something that YouTube has taught me, and I am glad because you know it's you need these life lessons sometimes, and it was something that I was like, yeah. You know, typical teenager stuff. It's like, yeah, you know everything in the world. You you can't tell me what to do. I'm a teenager. I'm I obviously know everything. But now, a few years on, it's like, yeah, actually, I don't know heckle, really, at all. Um, <laughs> you're you're always learning. There's there's always gonna be someone that is better at what you do than you. But as long as you love what you do, and as long as you are willing to, you know, embrace change embrace the challenge, then you're going to be alright. You're going to be alright. You, you just have to find what you love and do it. That That is what I have learnt just from doing like the little bit of YouTube that I have done. And Lukey's taught me that, you know, it's fine. It's fine to, to make mistakes in the videos because normally I'll, I'll beat myself up about making a mistake in a video or whatever or, you know, get down if there were, um, if, if there was negative feedback, but y you know, you you can't get down about those sorts of things. There's there's always going to be someone that says, "Oh yeah, your video is horrendous." Huh, <laughs> lol. Because that, that that that's what YouTube comment sections are like. I'm just gonna fill up the tank. That's what YouTube comment sections are are, are like on occasion. Um, and uh, asexuality and grey asexuality is valid, and here's why: it's the first experience that uh, I actually had of that. We we got trolled. A little bit where where we got um quite, quite a few dislikes and I was quite down about that because we were like oh people don't like the video but no it, it's like you just got to take these sorts of things with a pinch of salt and you know just as long as you enjoy what you do you're fine uh I need to sleep here please boop can I please sleep I, I can do a sleep I can do a sleep yes awesome gonna get a bit of rest it's Oh, we're going to be doing nighttime driving. Excellent. Uh, I need to reverse in a good way. Um, there we go. But yeah, as long as you do what you love, you're going to be all right. You're going to be absolutely hunky dory. Excellent. Okay. Uh, that's fine. Let's truck on over to Manchester because we've only got four hours left. This might have to be multi parts if I don't crash. Um, I thought I would have crashed by now, to be honest, but, you know, we might do a segmented trip across Europe, seeing how far I can get without damaging myself. You know, that might make an interesting little series, would it not? But, yeah, um, what was I going on about? YouTube! That's what I was talking about. Yes, YouTube. YouTube is good. I like YouTube. It's been a bit of a mess recently. Just, well, it's been a bit of a mess for about a year, year and a half now. It was a mess before we even started. But, you know, you've got to... Again, embrace the limitations. It's something that I, I always talk about and always keep in mind when producing videos. We're always going to be limited by something. 
Um, for example, my, my computer isn't the best computer in the world. So, you know, we work around that. We, we produce videos and then we go off and do something else. We might... Oh, hold on, lights. Did I just turn off my engine? There we go. So, um, yeah, we might go off and, and, and do something else while while my um, computer is rendering. I, I might go and read game articles or, like, in, in my spare time. Or I, I might record, you know, some like something else. Just, just with my phone or something. Like, you know, just working around with the time that you've got. Because you've only got limited time. I'm I'm working full time now, and you've only got limited time to do th to do things. So y you have to find workarounds. Y you have to be productive with your time. Um, and another thing is that Luke and I don't live together. We produce the videos independently. So having good communication skills has has also helped not only our relationship but also to produce better content on the channel. So. Just having to work around those sorts of limitations of not living together, of you know having full-time work schedules, of being only being able to produce videos outside of full-time work, and still having kept that you know basically daily upload schedule for a year. There's been a couple of days where we have like that that slide, but yeah, it's it's just been been very interesting. Uh, to keep that going and again we're going to have to embrace that limitation of not being able to do that soon because it's yeah there are a couple of bits and pieces coming up but yeah it's it's been very interesting a very interesting experience of, of just trying to keep on top of things trying to keep many balls juggling just personal lives and working lives and you know this because YouTube I consider more than a hobby but less than a job at this point i don't consider it a job because it's something i love to do I'm, I'm, you know luke and i don't get paid to do this um but i consider it as more than a hobby because i take it very seriously um luke and i have business cards for the channel i mean i'm quite serious about the hobby um but then would i call it a hobby again going back to that because we take it a lot more seriously than than, than just a hobby we we keep on top of a daily upload schedule at this point. We basically advertise ourselves. We we go to meets and that sort of thing. Hand out business cards, uh, network, that sort of thing. I was talking to a um, a, a, a games QA tester um, a while ago, just just at like a a work thing. So you know, it's just you meet people and you network and you talk to them about what you love and. That, that, that's the thing, you just have to make, ooh, don't crash, you just have to make yourself get out there, you have to network, you have to talk to people, because it's a small world, you know, you could meet somebody in a week's time that, you know, might be an independent developer of a video game, and then you could talk to them about, about the channel, and, and they're like, oh yeah, like, you could talk to them about their video game, and it could sound awesome, and then you could perhaps review that game, and then you'd each be a bit more successful from that because they're getting exposure for the video game you're playing an awesome game and you can cover it with my squeaky voice and you know everybody's having a good time the, ind the indie developer gets more exposure for the game on YouTube and you get to be a rambly batto on the internet everybody wins and you know I, I, I love covering indie games it's, it's one of my favorite things to do, do on the channel Euro Truck Simulator uh, is it a double A game it's a simulator game which is often uh, you know, tied in with, uh, you know, indie games, but I'd consider I'd consider this more of a double A game at this point. Oh, I need to be in Manchester. Click, 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 click. Yeah, it's it's, it's more more of a double A game, but I'm getting beside the point. Again, you 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 network, you meet people, you you do new and interesting things just in, in your life in general, and you meet interesting people that have you know, interests that coincide with your own. That is why I take YouTube seriously, because you never know who you, you can meet. You never know what experiences you can get from playing new and interesting games and meeting people that develop new and interesting games, because without the people that develop these games, Luke and I wouldn't have anything to cover. So, <laughs> we are indebted to people that produce video games, like, massively. 
and we absolutely adore the video games that people produce, so why would we not want to cover them? Why would we not want to share games that we love and shout them from the rooftops? Because that that's what we do. That is what we do. We, we shout the games that we love from the rooftops because they're awesome games. And then, or, or, of course, we warn people about, about the games that are awful because, you, you know, a lot of the time, people are awesome. But then, a lot of the time as well, people are bad. And you get the same <laughs> in gaming. You, you evidently get the hellish, horrendous games. And, you know, the ones that can be predatory with mi microtransactions. And j just being bad games. They, they're badly made just to get a bit of money, a bit of quick money. And that's bad. That's a bad experience. Nobody wants to do that. So, of course, we'll, we'll warn people about when there's bad games, but more often than not, we want to shout the good games on the rooftops. We want to spread positivity. You know, I get rambly and, and, and bad and nasty on occasion when I get very angry, but that's generally about the real world um, and not the video game place that, that happy me likes to be in. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I can get angry on occasion, and that that's when angry, grumbly me comes out generally about badness in the world. But when it comes to gaming side of things, we want to share the good, because there's a lot of negativity and bad in the world, so why not share the good to counteract that? Because yes, I absolutely love video games. Share love, not hate. Where was I? Where did I start with this? I don't know. I'm rambling again. Again, no cuts in this video. <laughs> Just talking along, as I do. I've covered it many times before about why I don't like doing massive amounts of editing. But yeah, one more time I suppose for the people in the back. I like to, you know, have just a seamless experience in games. And then when there are cuts, it's just cutting out the, the, the awful, boring, you know, me just going quietly. Or like, ooh, that's interesting, sort of thing. Um, just because, you know, you want, you want excitement in games. But at the same time... I like the natural flow of games. I like to be able to share games where I don't have to do a massive amount of editing. In the Fallout uh, New, no, yeah, Fallout New California series, there's been a bit more, you know, cutting and stuff, just because you don't want to watch me doing a massive amount of inventory management. You don't want to watch me traipsing through the wasteland, meeting nothing um, apart from the occasional, you know, intercalation with wildlife or whatever. But when it comes to games in general, I don't like doing a massive amount of editing, because I like, you know, sharing the visceral experience of, of, of what you would expect from the game, whether it be slow-paced, whether it be fast-paced, you know, you just want to share the game as it is. If I were to do many, many cuts, you might be, you know, misinformed about a game that it's fast-paced, it's rapid, whereas, you know, if I were to do many cuts in Neurotruck Simulator, you'd be like, wow, that's quick, you're doing it really quickly, whereas, no, it this is the more honest experience. You're in a truck, and you're going slowly, generally, because you, you, you can't break the speed limiter, or if you can, it, it's a mod or a hack. And I don't like doing that in gaming, um, apart from, you know, New California. It's an awesome mod, but yeah, you, you can hear me ramble about that in the New California videos. But, you know, it's, it's a slow-paced game. This. There you go. That, 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 that's all that this is. It's just... With a couple of, of swears on occasion when I crash into something, which I haven't crashed yet, which is actually very good. I haven't crashed, I haven't taken a damage. Very nice indeed. Um, but yeah, th th this is a slow paced game, and I am not hiding that at all. I had to cut bits out for the 300th video, because literally at that point I was so bloody knackered, I was so tired, and I just wasn't talking. I, I kept forgetting to talk. Um, it's quite early in the morning right now, and I've, I've had a coffee, hence my ramble, hence my, you know, massive long ramble, and why I've actually been pretty aware, um, whereas I, I did that Euro Truck uh, 300 video at about 6 in the evening, and finished around, you know, half 9, so I was bloody knackered, it was getting to my bedtime at that point, I was a bit tired, but... This is quite early, so I've been able to ramble on through with some form of cohesive thread of logic. Whereas in that, I was just seeing things going, oh, that's a sign, or, oh, no, I crashed it, it did. Because, you know, that, that made for a more entertaining video. Um, whereas with this, the whole challenge is not crashing. If I did a cut, I could have crashed. I could have repaired my vehicle. 
I could have done any manner of things, but everything that you're seeing on screen now is everything that has happened and will happen. Because, you know, it would detract from a challenge if I were to actually take something out. It would put in the seed of doubt that I hadn't actually, you know, achieved what I had set out to do. And we're coming up to the, uh, the, the scary Scooby-Doo factory again <laughs> that we uh, saw previously. I had a police car. Excellent. Um, but yeah, it, it would detract from the challenge because it, I could have potentially done something fishy. I, I, I could have, you know, done a jammy dodger and just go and, gone and repaired my truck or some other jamminess, some other delicious jamminess. But yeah, that, that's pretty much why I'm not doing a cut in this video. Jammy Dodgers are good though. I've been eating many of those for breakfast. Not not the healthiest breakfast, but Jammy Dodgers are delicious. And anybody that else that says otherwise is an alien. They are an alien if you do not like Jammy Dodgers. They are an excellent British snack, and I have been having them for breakfast with my coffee and medicine and vitamin C tablet and multivitamin tablet. It's been excellent. Very excellent indeed. Just because, you know, it's a sweet thing. It's a sweet little biscuit and it goes excellently with coffee. Um, I drink more tea in the afternoons. Coffee to pep me up in the morning. And then tea to keep me going. I've not actually had a cup of tea in a while though. I might actually have to make one after I've done this video. You know, just pull into Manchester, get a cup of tea. And then for the next episode, I'll be all refreshed. All refreshed, did 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 Make sure I don't crash, did 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 And die, did 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 uh, And they all should be good. It should be very good indeed. But yep, yeah, when it comes to this, slap on an intro, slap on an outro, we'll all be good. Oh, and of course, li little Loke up there in the right-hand corner, um, just to look over the whole proceedings. That's very good indeed. Because, yeah, that, that's a, another thing on the channel. Um, we've had the formula mixed up quite a bit. We didn't have an intro, like, for the first, I don't know, 60 videos, I think. And then I... Um, talk to uh, like a, a couple of people I went and got opinions and they were like yeah intro would be pretty neat so I put on an intro put on an outro and personally I, I don't like tooting my ho own horn you know hubris and all that but I think it's it, it's all right uh, we're, we're looking to improve the intro and outro but yeah we're, we're pretty happy with with how it's going it's a definite improvement over like our, our first few videos where I didn't even know how to bloody edit things together where you know we, we've got our logo and then we've got the seams of the video up up and below because I didn't know how to increase the size of the logo <laughs> in the editor I was a complete noob and still am a complete noob at video editing but yeah it's just yeah I, I've, I've learned so much doing YouTube it's been it's been a bit ridiculous and then um having Loke in different places on the screen due to, you know, different layouts. Oh, indicate. Don't crash into me. Due to having different layouts and stuff of di different um, games, which, you know, is the thing. Spelunky, for example, you've got t uh, top left bombs and lives and stuff. Um, in Fallout New Vegas, you get the, the little quest markers come up on the left. Uh, but then, I don't know, like, in other games, I generally like to have Loki in the top left, um, just because, you know, it's a bit more like the, um, the screen capture, or not screen capture, sorry, the, the face cam that you would otherwise get in, in, like, YouTuber videos. You normally have them in, in the top left, but I don't want to cover up anything that might be important to the game, hence moving Loke all over the place, all over the hecking place. He does like to fly about a little bit. Um, hence why he's up on the top right rather than the tra uh, traditional YouTuber face cam on the top left up there. Um, just because, y you know, you you've got to show off the game. That That's the fundamental bit for a gaming YouTuber. That's basically half the title of a gaming YouTuber. Or YouTube fur, as I do like to... Um, <laughs> call ourselves because yes very fandom is awesome and YouTube fur is a very nice little um, port portmanteau of uh, those don't crash don't crash don't crash port port portmanteau portmanteau basically mixing of words that of um, YouTuber and furry so I do like the word YouTube fur it's quite it's quite nice and it's a, a fun little thing because content creator is ugh, it's a it's a nasty word it's a nasty swear word because you know you're, you're producing content content as if it's just been consumed 
and I'm pooped out. It's, it, it's, it's content. There's nothing interesting about it. It's just content. Yay, Manchester discovered. But no, it's like... I don't... Luke and I... Well, from my own personal... Oh, I just ran a red light. From my own personal uh, point of view, Luke and I aren't content creators because we like to produce videos that, that, that we love. We don't consider it to be content. It's more of like a, a, a passion project. Each video is more of something that we love and want to bring from us to you. So we don't see it as content. We see it as passion projects. Um, and So content creator, a uh, horrible word, is basically a, a, a poor descriptor in my opinion. Um, whereas YouTube for... I, I, I just really like a play on words to be honest. I really like a play on words between YouTuber and furry. So that's why we got that going on. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. Ah. Want to actually see the red lights? Because, yep, yeah, going into towns, the start and end of these little challenge videos might actually be more problematic than, you know, the actual trip. Um, so we're going to be pulling up into Manchester. There we go. Okay, don't, don't you dare crash into me. I've got into Manchester. I want to make at least one delivery. Okay. Oh, yeah. YouTube fur. That is the word that we prefer. Mm -hmm. Content creator is a nasty swear word. Boo. It's a nasty C word. So, we're going to be pulling up into Manchester. I'm going to stop rambling. Oh, don't cry. Okay. <laughs> I, I panicked. I thought somebody was coming up on my left there. Um, yeah. That... I'm going to be quiet now so I, I can actually, you know, try and actually park this thing without crashing into, you know, a sign or something stupid, because that would be a stupid mistake to finish this video on. I have to go... Do you, are you kidding me? I have to go around a roundabout. Great. Okay, careful. Careful. Okay, going to go around slowly. Going to take things easy. Good, good, good. Okay. Now we just have to park up. Um, In here. Don't you dare hit the thing. Okay, good. <laughs> Okay, there we go. Excellent. Uh, let's play it safe. Confirm that. There we go. We need to go over to the left. Lefty Lucy. Oh, come on. Okay. Why? Turning circle on this big boy. There we go. And... I don't want to skip the parking thing, please. I want to be a good bato. I'm going to be a good boy and park this properly. Um, there we go. Pull this in. And around. Yay! And we are parked up. Awesome. Awesome. Gravel delivered from Aberdeen to Manchester. And time taken, 17 hours, 22 minutes. 240.3 litres of fuel consumed. And we're making our way up to level 9. Awesome. This is my little Knighton truck. That has been the first episode of the Trials of Luke and Loke One Hit Wonder. Unfortunately, it does come to the shill 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 bit of this video. If you did enjoy this video, leave a like, comment and subscribe. If not, that's perfectly fine as well. Those sorts of things can go and crash, which we did not in this video, to, to much surprise, to be honest. So, yes, you can come and join us next week for more One Hit Wonder. Hopefully we won't crash then. But until then, thank you so much for watching our videos. I hope you have a wonderful evening and good night.